What's up everybody, Art of the Pirate here, and today I want to talk about Mid Lane Gideon. Now Mid Lane Gideon is a great burst caster, but to make his ultimate really come alive, he needs to have the proper team color. I want to show you my deck and how I like to play him. The deck I show is a much better build than the one I actually play with. The one I play with has Tainted Magic and Hydroverser, and I think you should have one or the other. I did not like playing with both. Now let's take a look at Gideon's deck. First, I grab my Assassin's Ward. This is a dummy ward and, you know, you really just use it to throw out there so you have a little vision. After I return to base, I grab a healer token and a health potion for that early game sustain. Next, I grab a Sage's Ward with one point of health in it. My next two cards are both six point adamant edges. My next card is Hydroverser. Now, depending on your farm, if you hit level eight, but only have one adamant edge, Go ahead and get your Hydroverser first, because at level 8, you've got 4 stacks on your rock, and Hydroverser scales with your mana, so its damage output is actually better than having 8 points in power. But you can go ahead and finish up your Adamant Edge after you get your Hydroverser. But if you get rid of one of your adamant edges to finish your hydroverser that's okay too that's not going to really affect the end of the build the next card i like getting is a shadow scroll shadow scroll offers a little bit of ability pin as well as offers quite a bit of power now i would recommend going for a 10 point ability pin with pure power on it before you really start stacking ability pin at this point in the game, you're about half built of maybe a little more, but you should not concentrate on ability pin until you get that power up a little more. My shadow scroll is then followed by two identical staff of the adamants with pure power. My last real card is another shadow scroll with seven points in ability pin. This really allows Gideon to hit hard with his damage abilities. Lastly, I upgrade my Sage's Ward to a 10 point Sage's Ward. The exact same, just upgrade the cards with a few more points in them. Now, if you do have four Shadow Scrolls, I would recommend getting rid of the Adamant Edges and going ahead and putting on four Shadow Scrolls with nothing but power Except for one, instead of having a three point power card, go ahead and put a three point ability pin in. This will get you to the 30 point ability pin mark. And really, no one stacks more armor than that. You know, every once in a while there's a few, but for the most part, that's really going to tear people's armor to pieces. Now, let's get into some gameplay. I'm here mid lane with Bellica, and I actually got an earlier pick on her, I just decided not to include it, it was nothing fancy. Um, I'm, I've been able to stay in lane very well so far and actually have not backed. By maintaining control on those river buffs and having the, this extra health potion, I've been able to really stay in this lane. And so far I've got 4 points. I'm really hoping to get to six points so I can just go ahead and max out my Sage's Ward before I really have to worry about anything else. Now I'm gonna hang out and wait for this river buff to show up, but I see our Twin Blast and Phase come in and they end up pushing Velika back to the tower. So, you know, I didn't really help out any, but just being there in case something happened is a good idea. I'm able to get this black buff, I head back to lane, and really try to put some pressure on this tower. A few minutes later, I'm really close to being out of mana, and we still have a decent amount of time before the river buffs pop back up, but I don't want to really leave lane. I want to stay in lane because I'm one point away from getting my Sage's Ward, and luckily I get it right there but I am out of mana, 
Revenant comes in, I say, hey, this is a great time to bat. I'll get my ward and come back healthy. Mid lane hasn't been very exciting so far, but Grux heads over to the mid lane to get a gank and we go in, I'm able to get my ultimate off and really do some damage to people. Now FaZe did blind me, but I was in my ultimate, so I was still getting damage done. And we have this Revenant and Bellica fairly low. Grux decides to just, hey, let's go in and secure these kills. We still had a minion hitting the tower, and I'm actually able to pick up a kill on Revenant. At this point, I'm very low on mana, but I have enough for one more rock. I see Grux is in a lot of trouble, and I'm about to get this Bellico when he somehow managed to get the kill with three health left. I don't know, that was, that was crazy. But he was able to secure that kill, and we go about our business and try to really push this mid tower down. Now, at this point, I'm fairly low in mana, and we want to get a gank on this Bellica, so I'm just going to go ahead and alter and let Grux get the kill, and I'm just going to back after this because I, I really have no mana to do anything. But we ended up managing to get this mid tower down. I'm putting a little more pressure on this mid lane, and time came up to where I was able to go get a river buff. Without having vision on the map, I ended up stumbling into this Revenant, and luckily I do have enough mana to make an escape, but I'm going to run around and get the other river buff just to keep it away from him. They didn't end up chasing, they went to protect their tier 2. Even though I got invisibility buff, it worked out fine. A little later, I'm back in mid lane clearing up this ward when I hear Wukong in the jungle uh, cleaning up this close to jungle camp. I go ahead and try to get a gank off on him and uh, my rock just hits for so much damage that I was able to easily get that kill. Now although Wukong is not the most durable character, you can see how much that Hydroverser really boost your damage especially you know in this mid game you know just out of early game phase the enemy revenant and phase have rotated to our safe lane and have gone head to head with our twin in phase now twin blast was able to get the kill on to revenant but she is so elusive with her blind i'm gonna go over there and just clean her up and Again, that Hydroverser just does so much damage at this early level that I took her, you know, a third of her health with my rock, you know, maybe even a little more. We've got two of them down, but Sevrog, Grux, and me are not as healthy as we could be, and we don't have a minion wave with us, so we go ahead and back up. And luckily we did at the time because Wukong came over there and then if you see we turn around and boom, their three remaining heroes are right there on our tails. So far this match we've done a really good job of keeping pressure on the enemy and uh, really securing kills. And this kind of goes to our Twin Blast's head and he starts you know, chasing kills instead of playing smart. Um, right here, he's just surrounded. I'm, I go over there, throw my portal up, try to get him out, but unfortunately, there was nothing I could do. He was really out of position trying to chase these kills. And for all of you that don't know, chasing kills is a horrible idea, especially for an ADC. It is much better to run away and reset yourself because every time you chase a kill you're getting deeper and deeper into enemy territory and the deeper you go the harder it is for you to get out it is much better to lose a kill and be smart about it than to get a kill and die for it 
Here's another example of twin face being out of position. Now, what I'm about to show you is a really hard habit for anyone, anyone to break, especially someone like me. I like going in there and trying my best to kill people, but there was nothing I could do at that point. Twin was going to die, and if I used my torn space to get in there, I was just gonna die too. It doesn't matter how much damage I did to them. It was four on one. There's no way I'm going to live through that. Just like I said with chasing kills, needlessly sacrificing yourself is never worth it either. You know, if this was in game and I knew I would successfully get him out and I would probably die for it, but he would successfully live, I might consider doing an even swap. But he was going to die, and there was really nothing I could do about that. I might have been able to jump down there and throw up my portal, but the last time I did that, he didn't use my portal. So I'm not going to sacrifice myself to let him, you know, survive five seconds longer. Just a few minutes later, we get into this weird kind of crazy team fight where everybody's just kind of strung out everywhere. I go to do my ultimate, but I'm actually up way too high. Uh, so I wasn't able to do a whole lot with that. I'm trying to get on the Wukong or really anybody. Uh, I even hit Steel a few times, even though Steel's the worst character to go for as a ability damage hero. Um, I go ahead and try to get this Bellica. I'm taking tower damage, but I'm going to back up. But hey, we've got our minion wave in the tower. Let's get this tower. Well, it turns out Twin Blast and FaZe had a completely different idea. And their Revnik came up behind us and really slaughtered us. And this was just a bad fight. I would say we ended up coming out on top. But... Uh, you know, there were needless deaths here if we would have just had better communication with our ADC and our support. At 25 or 6 minutes in, our phase actually DC'd, and so we're four manning everything. We got into a nasty fight at the Raptors camp, and just without that phase support, we ended up three of us going down and during that time they were able to go over and get Orb Prime. Now, since it is a 4v5 at this point, we actually do a great job of defending. And this is what I would highly recommend for anybody that's scared of Prime or doesn't really know how to work around Prime. Get to your tower, stay there, and don't leave the circle and defend. That is, Prime is very easy to deal with if you're able to do this as a team. You know, I, I go to rotate over here and you know, hey, there, there's two of them on it. I need to get back to my mid tower. They push in, I ult them, try to get a little damage on the heroes, try to clear out this minion wave and I was able to save this tower. When the enemy has Prime, it's very important to go for the minion waves. That way, if they do come under tower, the tower will help you do damage to them. If you've got a full wave of minions and they're at the tower, they're going to get it. So just concentrate on downing those minions. Now FaZe has DC'd again. She came back for a few minutes and then DC'd again and they're making their final push to our tower. I go up and ult them, and I'm high enough to where Steel can't get me. We end up getting, I believe, three of them down, and me and Sevrog make a great push for mid lane. Now, one thing to note is, right now we have two of their heroes down, and this is kind of, the best opportunity we have to make a play since we do not have a support and we got a three of their heroes down. This is really the only 
good opportunity we have to, hey, let's get some damage on their core and try to win this. And this brings up a, another good point I'd just like to tell everybody. The Paragon community has been very salty lately, and the two things that I would recommend is really don't play solo. Um, I know not everybody has teammates and players to play with, uh, and to be quite honest, I play solo all the time, but I'm getting to the point where I'm just not having fun playing solo just because everybody's just so salty about everything. If you can play with two or three friends, get on comms, it's, it makes Paragon much funner to play. Now we make it down to this tower, uh, but their whole team spawned in. We get it very low, but I say, okay, I gotta get out of here. And uh, I turn around and kind of look back and I should have just kept running. But uh, I end up going down here too. And that's, that's three of us down and their whole team still up. So this ends up being the game for us. As this match wraps up, I just want to say you cannot win every game. No one out there has won every game. If you lose, hey, it's not the end of the world, just as long as you learn something from it. And to be quite honest, this was one of the funnest games I've had in a while. Well, as always, thanks for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, show me some love, leave me a comment. If there's anything I can improve upon or something that you wanna see, let me know and I'll be sure to get back with you. I'd also like to give a shout out to the two buddies I had playing with me. Corvette Stingray 1972 and Avalon 034. I appreciated y'all playing with me and I'll see all y'all in the next video.